Welcome into the Arrowhead Attic Podcast. I'm Matt Verderam. We're joined by a very special guest. The guest who's actually celebrating his birthday today, uh, the tight end of the Kansas City Chiefs, Travis Kelsey. Travis, how are you? Matt, how's it going, man? 33 hasn't felt any better. I'll tell you what, it's my first day being 33, and it's a great day because we uh, we got a win on Sunday, man. Yeah, you know, what are you uh, doing for your birthday? You got anything special cooked up? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not a big uh, birthday celebrator. I um I always feel like it's just the most awkward day in the world for me because everyone's reaching out, um, and I'm always focused on uh, football in October. So, just trying to get back to everybody that's uh, that's reaching out and telling me happy birthday. That's all I got planned on my agenda. Gotcha. Well, you mentioned the game on Sunday, forty-one thirty-one. You guys go into Tampa Bay and get the win, and for you. Uh, you became uh, a top five all-time leader in, in receiving yards for a tight end. You moved past Rob Gronkowski to get in the fifth. You're closing in on, on Shannon Sharp, who's fourth, just over 10,000. And you talked about it after the game. You were a little bit emotional about what it meant to you. And I'm, I'm curious, when you stop and you think about what you've accomplished and where your career has gone and where it continues to go, uh, do you feel like you're the greatest of, of all time at what you do? And, and if not, who would you put in that category with you? Without feeling, you know, or not without telling anybody, you know, that uh, that I'm the best, I do feel like I bring something to the table that uh, that people haven't seen in the NFL. And I'll just leave it at that. I don't like to brag or talk who's better here or there because um, it's such a team sport that it's hard to, you know, individually point out people's success or how good somebody is or compare somebody to another to another player. I just go out there and I have fun, man. I have a blast playing for the guys uh, in that building, for the for the community that is Kansas City. Um, it is such an honor to be on that list. It was an honor when I was in sixth place behind Gronk. Uh, it's it's and it's just uh, it's so cool to be on that list with uh, with the greatest that have ever played this game, man. And uh, I'm just very fortunate that I've been in the situation that I have been in Kansas City to uh, to be able to have the success statistically and uh, in the win-loss column. What's the part of your game that you're most proud of? Um, I, I put a lot of pride in getting open no matter what. Uh, no matter what the coverage is, no matter what the uh, how, how many people they're doubling me, or whether they're doubling me, whether it's man coverage, whether it's zone coverage, you know, I, I, I feel like I, I can always run my route to get open for the quarterback uh, and to get open to make the big play. And um, the big-time moments are, are what I uh, – I think I, I find pride in the most. And uh, that's why when you saw me tweet out uh, after the Colts game on how I need to be more accountable, because I know there was a time in that game that I had a drop that I could have catapulted our team into into winning that game. And, um, you know, that's where I put the most of my pride is uh, in, in those big time moments, uh, making those big time plays for us. You know, you mentioned the, the quarterback play you've had in Kansas City, obviously starting with Alex Smith, but now with Patrick Mahomes over the last handful of years. And you guys have such a great relationship on the field, but really – what fascinates me is you guys have such a great relationship away from it as well. Whether you guys are playing golf, you're the Stanley Cup final, you're in the final four, whatever the case may be. And I'm, I'm just curious, how has that relationship gone from a hey, Patrick's coming into the building in 2017 to now you guys seemingly being so close? And what is that relationship like for you away from the football field? Um, to be honest, it was uh, it was very genuine, and it, and it's been it's been an absolute blast to get to know Pat and his family and all of his friends uh, since he's been in the league. Um, I can honestly say that I'm I'm close enough to where Pat's family now, man. He's, uh, you know, I I know everybody in his life, and he knows everyone in mine. And it's it's been a it's been a cool relationship to build both professionally on the field, um, as well as you know off the field. And uh, I think uh, you see us uh, in in the off season have a lot of fun together because we're we're into a lot of the same things like golf uh, and uh, and going to other sporting events or, or concerts and things like that. And it's, uh, I think relationships uh, go hand in hand. Good relationships off the field uh, go hand in hand for your relationship on the field, man. And when you know a guy uh, personally, um, the more I've gotten to know Juju, the more I've gotten to know Marquez and, uh, and Skyler or even uh, uh, Mikol Hardman uh, over the past three, four years, um, the more I get to know those guys, uh, the better we play. And uh, the more I want to, I want to fight for that guy next to me. Um, and this, you can say the same about uh, a guy like Clyde edwards Alaire, um, my brother, and uh, and and even the 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 guy, the the, the rookie in his in his running back room, and uh, Isaiah Pacheco. 
Um, the more we get to know each other, uh, the more you want to play for the guy next to you because you just appreciate who they are as people. And um, and sure enough, the Chiefs have been able to bring in a lot of great, great character guys uh, over the past years. You mentioned all those different guys, all those new faces, MVS, Juju, Pacheco, Sky Moore, the list goes on and on. You guys really, for the most part, in the Mahomes era, if you want to call it that, since 2018, you, it's been you, it's been Patrick, it's been Tyreek Hill, at least to the outside world. And Sammy Watkins having a big part in that. And, of course, Coach Reed. But so many new faces this year. And you guys come out in week one, and you score 44 points, and it seems so easy against Arizona. And the next two weeks, even though you beat the Chargers, the offense kind of goes and stops and starts. The Colts game was a real frustrating game, I'm sure, for you guys. And then you come out against the number one defense in football, a defense that had, that had only allowed 27 points total the first three weeks, and you guys had 28 by halftime. Do you feel that it's starting to fall into place with all those new faces, not only just you know understanding each other on the field, but as you mentioned, kind of away from it? Do you feel like that game kind of symbolized maybe a little bit of a turning point now that you're starting to get to know each other a bit more? 100%, man. And uh, everybody felt it after that game. That was one of the funnest games that I've ever played in because of how much success we had across the board. You know, we were running the ball unbelievable. We were, Pat was making crazy plays left and right. Everybody felt like they had a piece of the pie in terms of touching the ball and making a play. Three tight ends scored. You know, it's, it, was, it was all around, especially on the offensive side of the ball, felt like we were clicking. You know, the offensive line played their tail off, um, was out there just moving, controlling the line of scrimmage. And um, when it's that fun against a great team, um, you get a little bit closer together as a team. And you, and you start, to f- start to really build that beast uh, of what you can be and uh, the expectations that you set for yourself. And uh, I think we found that mold uh, throughout the work week last week. I think uh, the the attention to detail, um, the focus that we had in terms of the game plan and how we think that they're going to approach uh, defending us, um, we found w- exactly what that looks like. And as long as we keep that mentality of wanting to get better and wanting to be perfect or at least strive for, strive for perfection, um, I think we'll, we're going to be an unbelievable team uh, throughout the rest of this season. You know, I wanted to ask you one more quick one on Mahomes. I asked Alex Smith this when we had him on the podcast earlier this year, and he gave a pretty funny answer. Like M- Patrick Mahomes seems like, at least from afar, a guy who does nothing wrong. He was a great baseball player. He's a great football player. Seems like a, a, a wonderful person. But I asked Alex Smith, to, look, give me one thing that Patrick Mahomes is terrible at. Give me one thing. <laughs> and he's like, look, man, he can't order a steak. It's a disaster. Like, you take the man out to dinner. Ordering a steak is a train wreck. You know him as well as anybody. What is the one thing that you can give Pat a little bit of crap for, for not actually being great at? Uh, um, I don't know, man. It's, uh, that's pretty funny right there. I would say, I would say he's gotten a lot better at, uh, at ordering steaks from his rookie year till now. <laughs> um, he, he, just, he, knows which, uh, he knows to get that Wagyu every time. Um, I, honestly, man, there's not much that I've seen that Pat uh, is terrible at, man. Man, I'm trying to think of it in my head, and I just can't think of anything that's uh, that's worth saying. The guys, uh, the guys got a good knack at, uh, at just about everything, especially everything competitive. Uh, the more reps that he gets, he just finds ways to to win, man. You know, I, I would ask if he's as good of a basketball player as he, as he thinks he is, but but Brett Veach put a stop to that, so I, I can't really yeah. he, even go there. He put a stop. He put a stop to that on the, on the court, man. He was out there hooping and balling on him uh, this past Sunday. He had, I think, he hit him with a, a drop step, spin move, sidestep, fadeaway there for uh, one of the touchdowns. So uh, he, he's still he's still out there practicing his basketball moves. You know, actually, so I, I meant to ask that earlier. So that play, which has now gone all over the world since since Mahomes decided to put a spin move on Devin White. Like from your perspective, what are you thinking as that play is going on and then obviously ends up in the end zone? You just gotta know that even though it looks like he's about to get tackled, you got to keep trying to find a way to get open. Because he's he's unbelievable. He's magic Mahomes for a reason, man. He can he can find his way out of anything, uh be able to keep a play alive as well as uh, you know, extend plays to make them even bigger than what they were designed to be. And uh, that's, that's sort of so much fun in playing with a guy like that. Cause you know that, uh, that you can steal yards or you can steal momentum and energy from a team because those, those kind of plays when they're successful are just daggers to the defense. 
A few more questions here with uh, Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey in the Arrowhead Act podcast. I wanted to ask you, you have a new podcast, New Heights, with Jason Travis Kelsey, of course, with your brother. You know, he is probably winding down in his career, doesn't, you know, maybe a year or two left, but one of the one of the great offensive linemen of his year. And I'm curious, uh, you know, this is a, a question for the future, but I don't know if you've ever really sat down and pondered it. What would it mean to eventually be in the Hall of Fame with him? I mean, there, there are very few brothers who've ever played together in the NFL period, in, in any way, shape, or form, let alone be as dominant as the, two, as the two of you have been. Have you ever stopped and thought about the fact that, like, there might come a time where you're at each other's inductions in Canton? Man, I um, I can't even fathom it, man. To, to be honest, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I played hockey growing up, and, uh, and, and a lot of my hockey and baseball, or really, I want to just say hockey, I played a lot of sports growing up, and traveled all throughout Northeast Ohio to, to, to play sports. And I would always drive past Canton, Ohio and the hall of fame. It, it would be an unbelievable honor, but it would be such a full circle for me to be. And it's a, for me to end up there. And I wouldn't be here in this position if it wasn't for my brother. It's the reason why I wear the number 87. I, uh, I, I believe that without him, without being able to follow his footsteps, without being able to go through this journey without my brother, I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in today. So I, I think uh, to, to start in Cleveland right there uh, and to end in, uh, in Canton with my brother would be, uh, it, would, it, would, it would make everything football-wise come full circle and, uh, and definitely be the most satisfying and, uh, and coolest day of my life if that ever happened. You know, I got to ask you a couple of quick ones here. First of all, You've become a real leader on the team, uh, you know, in, in the last handful of years, especially, you know, you, early on in your career, I think it's fair to say you were a little emotionally volatile on the field where <laughs> if things didn't go well, maybe it showed a little bit. Um, you've become such such a, a stabilizing force in the team. But I got to ask you, I have to ask you this question. In 2016, you guys played the Jaguars and you took a penalty in that game that I just looked on YouTube. It has over 400,000 views where a flag was thrown on you. You then maybe became the only player in NFL history that's all flag on an official. Hats went flying. You got tossed. In that moment, like obviously you're annoyed, but did you did you like get in the locker room or maybe it took a week or two and say, you know what, that's that's truly one of the great penalties in NFL history? <laughs> um I was uh, I was very embarrassed for a for a long time from that play. <laughs> and um it was because of the uh the look that Coach Reed gave me for getting kicked out of that game. And um, honestly, I, uh, I still, I, I can't necessarily say that I find it funny, but there, it, it is comical how the, the events kind of <laughs> unfolded there. Uh, it, it was just, um, yeah, I think that uh, when, when it's all said and done, I can kind of say that, yeah, I threw a flag on a ref, but for right now, man, I, uh, I had to apologize to that ref <laughs> a few times every time I saw him because I felt uh, just a, a bit embarrassed about uh, what I had just done on the field. All right, last one that I want you to talk about what you're working on with Tide. You're known for your fashion sense. Uh, certainly is something that, that you've brought into the league here with, with all the different outfits you've worn over the last 10 years. I'm curious, who on the Chiefs, player-wise, has the worst fashion sense? Who's the guy you're like, man, he needs a stylist in the worst way every time you guys get on a plane for a road trip? <laughs> um... I would say the guys that just uh, that show up to the to the facility and ask the uh, the equipment guys for a Chiefs uh, golf shirt. You know what I mean? The guys that are just wearing the generic uh, Chiefs travel gear stuff so that they don't get yelled at for wearing something to uh, non business like. One of them being, uh, man, I don't want to throw them under the bus right now, man. Listen, well, let's get into what you're doing here, Travis, with Tide. You know, I, I talked to Clay Matthews last week. I know he's working on this initiative with you as well, along with Chase Claypool, some other guys around the league, uh, trying to get people to maybe leave some of their superstitions behind, you know, and, and get some fresher laundry. So can you talk about what you're doing with Tide uh, and, and what people should be looking for? You know it, man. I'm, ta- I'm, I'm teaming up with Tide in the NFL to tackle superstition, like you just said. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, everybody has that one item of clothing whether it's a jersey, a sock, or an undershirt that uh, they just don't want to wash because they don't want to wash the lucky off of it. And uh, and we're here to tell you uh, with Tide Hygienic Clean and Tide Pods, you don't have to worry about that. Tide will, cl- will happily clean your jersey and keep all the luck on your clothes. Um, 
so you don't have to worry about the superstition of uh, of washing away your luck. And uh, we're teaming up with Ty to, to, to give away a few prizes, too. So make sure you check out uh, my Instagram or my TikTok post about Tide, Tide Hygienic Clean and, uh, and comment below what you would do to wash that jersey, uh, whether it's, you know, tickets to a game, maybe tickets to a Super Bowl or just memorabilia. Um, come up with something fun and creative and uh, you might walk away with a few fun uh, and grand prizes. Awesome. Well, great stuff, Travis. Uh, go enjoy the rest of uh, your birthday. May it even be the awkward day that it is for you. Uh, <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs 3-1. Got Monday Night Football coming up this week against the Las Vegas Raiders at home at Arrowhead Stadium before a very interesting game with the Buffalo Bills. Travis, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And everybody, make sure to check out Travis's new podcast and also, of course, his initiative with Tide. Thank you very much, Matt. We're going to need that uh, that Chiefs kingdom to be loud and proud this weekend for Monday night, baby.